Hi, welcome to iShoot Watches. My name is Dayton, and um, if you're new to the channel, what I do is uh, I'm kind of a hobbyist watchmaker. I'm learning, and I take on various projects and then uh, record them and share them. And I have this camera system that has like eight cameras, so you have a really good idea of what I'm actually doing instead of just close-ups of um, you know pieces of the operation cut together. Um, you see the whole thing in real time and you see everything I'm doing and uh, I'm not necessarily the best at what I do. So if you if you really want expert instruction, it's a good idea to look at other watchmaking channels by people that are more professional. But um, if you're learning, I think this channel can be interesting because you can see what I'm doing. You can get a sense of what it's like for a beginner um, and kind of calibrate that, calibrate your own expectations of your own ability to do it against that. And um, and also just, uh, yeah, like the, the, a lot of the videos on YouTube are just so, they're, they're by such expert watchmakers that you can watch them and just wonder, like, I don't know if I could ever do that or not. With me, it should be more like you, you look, you watch what I'm doing and you can see that you probably could do it. So hopefully that'll encourage other people to enjoy the, the, the hobby. Um, so what I'm going to do today is uh, I have these two watches. These are both uh, basically the same watch. This one doesn't have a dial. This one does have a dial. I spent like 14 hours or 12 hours, probably more, but uh, there's a 12 hour long video of me taking this movement apart and doing a, a whole bunch of different operations to get this to work without a dial. Um, but in the process, I got really comfortable with the, the movement, which is an ETA 2472. And this watch has the same movement in it. And in fact, these are basically the same watch. Um, this just has a dial, different dial. I think I'm repeating myself. They were both, they were, these were both made probably in the early 1960s uh, and branded Flurrier originally. In the process of working with them, I screwed up one of the dials. So this dial has been replaced with the same dial, but with a different brand on it. Um, but this watch is not running correctly. So what I'll do to start is, um, well, I'll tell you what tools I'm going to use because I think sometimes it's interesting to know, okay, for for to do this kind of work, you need this minimum tool set. Um, so I have, uh, I have six screwdrivers. They range from 0.5 millimeter. It's 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, 1.2, 1.4. Um, I have two, two tweezers, a number four uh, Dumont in brass and a 1AM. Dumont in brass. Uh, I have some hand lifters that are Bergeon uh, 30027. So these are levers that you'd lose, use to lift the hands. Th that's a pair of identical. And then this is a Bergeon tool um, 7010, which you use to press things down like a spring to keep it from popping up if you're removing a plate that has a spring under it, that kind of thing. Um, I also have a couple of hand presses from AliExpress China that when I put the hands back on because I'm going to have to take the hands off this movement. I have a Presto tool which can also be used to take the hands off the, the movement which I probably will use. I have some plastic tweezers from uh, iPhone repair kit <laughs> to grab hands so I'm not grabbing them with metal tweezers. I have some strong metal tweezers, stainless steel from my electronics kit. To, to pull the canyon, canyon pinion off of a uh, gear if I need something that's more powerful and I don't want to bend the brass tweezers. And I have this little Bergeon staking block. I don't know the part number of this offhand, but this can be helpful if there's something I need to pin back together. Like the on these, these movements, the um, canyon pinion kind of snaps into the gear underneath it and it helps to have a staking block to be able to snap that in to a flat gear. Uh, some Radico and um, and then when I seal it up I have some made in China silicone grease I have a dial protector and a little parts dish keep track of the parts while I'm working and a movement holder and a case back opener tool <laughs> and a and a casing cushion and I have a spare movement which is from the same period of ETA I think I can swap out the um, the date ring 
because the date ring, I just noticed the 13th, which happens to be showing here, it's got some, the paint's missing on the one. So I have a date wheel, which I'll compare and make sure it's the same. And then if it is, I'll swap that out. Um, okay, so that's the tools. And then the other thing, I have a time grapher, which is like, this is from AliExpress in China. I think it costs around $100, $150. Um, and what that does is it kind of measures the heartbeat of the watch. So I'm going to put this working one on first. So what we want to, what I want to do is compare um, how this movement should be working versus how it is working. And then we're going to take it apart and see if we can figure out why it's not running correctly. So this is pretty, this is running very well. Um, the beat error is the, is the difference between counterclockwise and clockwise rotation of the balance wheel. It's 1.2 milliseconds. That should be zero, but 1.2 milliseconds isn't terrible. The amplitude is 240 degrees. That's how far the balance wheel swings each direction. And it's losing seven seconds a day in this position. And then this line that's being drawn across here is showing you if it was losing a lot more time, the line would be steeper down. And if it was gaining time, the line would be up. And the distance between, if you can see, there's like a yellow line and a greenish blue line. The distance between those lines is the beat error. Um, and it's running at 18,000 beats per minute. So um, that's that's pretty normal. That this I wear this watch a lot. It's fine. It's, uh, it's running well. Now, this one is running so poorly that it actually, sometimes the time grapher can't even figure out what it's doing. So it's mistaken the, the, the um, beats per minute. It thinks it's 21,600, but we know, I know it's the same movement and it should be running at 18,000. 18, um, so the 21,000. Um, and because of that, the, the time well, the time was diving and now it's going up. Uh, oh, it looks like the time is... Anyway, it's not running correctly. Um, the beat error looks okay, but, the, but this is chaos. Like, um, it's changing its rate very quickly. And it's probably because it's actually being mismeasured completely because it probably has the beat rate is wrong so it's just uh i don't know this is not a happy movement right now um okay so what we're gonna oh the other thing i wanted to say about this is that um people may watch my channel and and they may see things in here that are that i don't see or understand so i'm going to talk about what i what i think the problem is i'm going to try to fix it and i'm going to test it afterwards but um uh, I'm open to people commenting and saying like, oh, I think the problem, because I might not solve it. Um, so people might notice something and say, oh, I think the problem is this or that. You should check that. So, um, the first thing is open the case back. I think I'll immediately get things out of the way here. So I'm going to remove the stem and the crown. Well, actually, there's a spring here I'm going to remove. You can see that this watch has very low amplitude right now. I'm probably going to need the crown again to do that. 
do some testing. Now this movement is in a it's in a a ring that protects it fairly well just at my We have to refocus a little bit here. Um, so now to remove the hands, I think I'll try. I should have set them all in the same direction before doing this. Let's set them at nine so they're kind of away from the paint on the dial. And then I wanted to try these hand lifters. I'm gonna wait for the second hand to come around. I just wanna start thinking about this. The problem could be as, as simple as um, friction in the in these gears that drive the, the minute hour hand and the second hand. So I didn't get the hour hand with that. And the hour hand is actually pushing down on the dial, which is not good. Um, I think I need to... I'm gonna open up this plastic it's already kind of thick plastic. So I want to use half as much. And I don't think that this hand lifter is going to get under there. Oh, you know what I can do? I can use the dial itself to pull the hand off. So that's what I'm going to do. We have to take the dial off anyway. So let's take these. <clears throat> These two hands. Okay, I dropped it twice already. And then um, So basically, I need to remove the crown and stem again. I need magnification for that. And then this is not ideal, but I don't want to put the dial into the 
case clamp. So I'm just gonna, and the hand, the hour hand is still on there. It's probably safe to set it down, but I'm just gonna loosen these two uh, screws to remove the case r ring. Okay, that should be enough to get that out. Now, <clears throat> the dial, the, the screws to... to free up the dial are, on this movement, they are on the sides here. Now normally, oh yeah, good. So the dial came off with the hand and I'll just dump the hand into the tray. Oh, it doesn't wanna go because it's still clamped to the gear. That makes sense. So that could be part of the problem with this. If the, if, if the, if the hand is put too far down on this gear, it's obviously going to not only going to stick like that, but it's also going to have some friction. I don't think that's what was happening, but it might be. The other thing is these dial, this dial spring is almost, um, it's completely flat. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to get rid of the hand now. Uh, and the dial. Oh, the dial can go in. Okay, so now we can... So one thing I'm going to need to fix eventually is Maybe I should get the microscope out here, though. So these these gears and uh, these these movements in general, I've I've played around with them a lot, so they're not in the best condition. But there's a couple things that could be going wrong. Inside of this could be dirty, so I think I should clean this gear. Um, and then these the spring, 
which is supposed to hold the gear down by pressing gently against the back of the dial. That spring is like completely flattened out. So I think I can fix that by just prying up on it. So this is something I've never seen anybody do this before. It just seems to me that it's logical to do this. And then like I said, I should probably clean this gear, but I want to look at something else here first, which is This gear I wanted to make sure that this Canon Pinya gear had 12 uh, 12 gears on it or teeth and it does so that's something I was worried that I had maybe put the wrong Canon pinion on this watch experimenting with other because I, I swapped a lot of parts around. So I found this picture on, um, I have a reference right here, but it's buried that gear. I found this on 17jewels.info, I think is the name of the website. So this is an ETA 24, this is the same watch, uh, 2472. So you can count the gears on the cannon pinion in that picture and you can see uh, the same, this has 12 gears on it. So there's no, there's no gearing problem there or wrong ratio or whatever. The other possibility is it's just not You can kind of you can see the the movement running below there. Um, so I wonder if we have the amplitude back. I don't think so. I think I can flip it over. But I kind of need to put it in the case. Oh, so I have another theory though. Let's see if the amplitude is better because it's uncased and there's and there's some the, the the hour hand gear is gone now the hands are gone now um so i think we can just see visually it's very obvious that the amplitude is almost like zero right now so there's no reason no need to even think about that the next but the next phase of this trying to trying to make it better or relieve what like let's assume that it's sorry um if we assume that the the problem is something is dragging on some there's something there's friction more friction in the movement than there should be um and that's what's causing it to run with low amplitude. 
then the next step is to start to do undo things that I've done in the past. And so one thing I've done is remove the the hour hand, I mean the um, date ring, and something could be, and and I've switched the gear. I actually switched this gear. Um, which is the main gear that gets the power from the um, mainspring and drives the hour hand. So, uh, I want to pull out everything that's touching that. But I'm also, just, sorry, just I'm just examining it because I'm thinking about, let me go wider. I'm just thinking about what else. This gear is in pretty bad shape, the, this gear underneath the cannon pinion. But if I remove it, the problem is if I remove it, then no power will go through the system, so I can't see what's slowing it down. The other possibility is that what's slowing it down is actually in the realm of the of the balance wheel. Okay, so there's there's a couple. Th I, I have an idea. I'm sorry for all this talking and not doing, but I'm just the like I don't know. I don't plan. I don't plan what I'm going to do in advance because I don't know what what's going to happen and what I'm going to find. So there is something I want to do, which is I want to change the date ring. In the process of changing the date, the date uh, disk. Uh, in the process of changing the date disk, something may behave differently. I may find that that relieves some pressure on something, or not. I don't think it will, but I need to change it anyway. So I'm going to change it now. But to do that, I think I should first remove the automatic rotor so I can safely put the movement in a case in the case holder. So I think to remove the rotor I can already because when this is upside down there's no point of there's nothing that's going to get damaged by the case holder. So this should give me a stable. And I've never taken the, I've never taken the automatic winding move, uh, mechanism off of this movement or any of these ETA movements before, but because there's no screw in the middle of the rotor, it's pretty obvious that the it's going to come off to get it off. I'm going to need to take off this screw, this screw, I think that's it. I'm not sure what, if this is part of it, I think that'll come with it. That probably holds other aspects of it together. This screwdriver is a 1.2, I think. I think I need to go to one millimeter. Hopefully that has a slightly sharper tip as well. I think I'm gonna use this as a 
place to put this screw. Maybe I'll put all these parts in there. Eventually, I'm looking forward to learning how to completely rebuild this movement and lubricate it, the ETA 2472 and, and variants thereof. So this is interesting to, to tr try taking the automatic movement off for the first time. Or the automatic mechanism. But I have no idea. I should have watched other people's videos about this first. It came off, but is there any trick to that? Like, how's that gonna, how am I gonna get this back on correctly? I don't know. Line up the screw holes, try to get the gears to match. Okay, so that's a first for me. And now, <clears throat> we can see it's still running slow. And that's despite the last time I had it open, I set I set the speed fast. I'm gonna I'm gonna set the speed back to the middle just because it's obviously got a problem other than regulation. Can also take a look at this mainspring area now. That is like such low amplitude, it's ridiculous. The reason I'm looking at this also is because somebody may see things I don't see. I may see something with the microscope that I can't see with my eyes. I'm particularly interested in how the spring is moving. Why such low amplitude? And then the other thing we can look at is try to see into the jewels. That looks pretty good. There's like no movement there. See the pinion or the pivot. Pivot inside that jewel is like really standing still. And then now that the automatic winding mechanism is off, we can flip it over and safely hold it And then there's two things. We should be able to look at the top 
Jewel. That looks a little bit funkier. Let me see if I can just prop this up so I'm not shaking. And look at that with a slight angle in focus. Is the movement still moving? It's still moving with very low amplitude. Sorry, this must be annoying. Where's that jewel? Jeez. That was a mistake. Okay, I want to try something else. Amplitude is still super low. But what I want to see is what happens if I see that's weird. If I give it some help, the amplitude goes way up and it stays. I guess it's slowing down very gradually or not even. Let's see if the time grapher can read this just from, I think it picks up the vibrations, so it should maybe you can read it through this metal. So that you. you the amplitude is now 179. The, the, it's 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 it has the correct beat rate of 18,000. Amplitude is 189, and it's just losing 200 seconds per day. Beat error is 1.2. It says it's losing 216 seconds per day. which I think would just mean that something is slowing it down, like uh, But also, when you're wearing a watch, you can't... You can't get in there and accelerate it with a puff of air just to get it running at a real speed. So let's see, what happens if I stop it and then let it go on its own again? Now it seems like it's speeding up to real amplitude again. 
That's mystery to me. But now that it has amplitude, we can look at the, the jewel again. And you can see the mainspring. Okay, so what the, the next thing is, I don't know why the amplitude came back just from puffing air at it, and now it, it, it likes running at a high amplitude. But I can go back to the plan, which is to change that date disk. So the way the date disk comes off is two screws on this plate, that one and that one. Screwdriver, slight, that's a one millimeter. I'm gonna go down 2.8. We could take it off of this first. Yeah, doesn't matter. I'm just curious if the amplitude is still high. No. Amplitude is now low again. I think that I just I lost the screw. I think it went inside the movement. So just trying to secure. If I did go in the movement, it should have fallen straight through. Oh, well, here it is in any case. And there goes a gear. And the amplitude is still low. So one theory about low amplitude is just that if it struggles because of, let's say that the oil is hardened on the... on the balance wheel. Maybe that just results in very low amplitude. And if you if you if you help it get up to where it should be, it can fight that friction. But as soon as the friction as soon as it starts losing to the friction, it drops back down into the lower amplitude. Oh man, a, a screw just fell out. What's that screw? That's is that That's strange.
I'm getting confused already. That could be a dial screw. Yeah. So that, that screw is a, is one of the, it's this screw holds the dial. Okay, so amplitude is still low. I just wonder if we turn this upside down and puff it again. Amplitude goes up again. If I turn it over, I'm trying to determine if gravity is affecting amplitude. I think it is. So that's running at high amplitude. Now when I turn it this way, and then flip it over again, now it's running at low amplitude. Okay, so somebody probably knows what that means, but I don't. Um, it could be that one of the pivots is gone on the on the um, balance wheel, and when it's on when it's laying on that side, the, the absence of the pivot results in the the jewel not operating correctly. Like the balance wheel shifts, sits on the jewel instead of being floating in the oil. The the pivot could be something like that. And the way to look at that would be to remove the. Let's do that. Do we want to change that date wheel first? Because we've got that off? Yes. Oh, i got to get used to this. I can just flip this magnifying glass up instead of constantly removing those. Um, okay, so date wheel. I just changed the date wheel on a very similar movement last night on the 2783. So technically you should take this plate off to but I was fiddling around with that other one and it just kind of came off. The problem is it's not really designed to because it's pinched between here and here. So I'll go ahead and do it by the book. I'm going to remove this screw.
I'm going to leave this outside. Now there's a spring under here. that is definitely at risk of going crazy. And actually, I think this spring is in backwards. So that spring, and then this little date lock arm. Okay, so now this is for sure gonna come off. There's just one place it's stuck under a little bit, which is this point right here. I just really don't want to take that off also. How difficult is it to take that off? See, shouldn't that be free now? There, okay. Now that's gonna be a clue as to how to put the other one back on. Now, <clears throat> to remove this one, I'm just gonna do this on the casing cushion. Because this is a donor movement. This is a 24, what is it? 24.08 or 24.09. Let's see if we can see that with the microscope. That's 2409. <coughs> Some other com parts are compatible between these two movements, so that's why I think I think these parts are also compatible. And maybe even the balance wheel is compatible. These are really tiny screws.
I should be careful. <clears throat> Too late. Pushing that balance wheel down into the case cushion like that was probably not a good thing. Now we have the same risk. There's a spring under here. It shouldn't pop up, but it could. Well, actually, I don't know. I haven't looked at this. This movement looks a little bit different. Okay, actually, that's cool. So we can see... Um, there's a little bit different arrangement with the date lock mechanism there. But we do want to get that spring free so it doesn't go on its own. And then the, the date wheel is free now. We'll want to kind of check that that looks compatible. The date lock is like, uh, oh, what happened? Oh, the date lock is like a wheel on this one. It's fancier than that, just that little arm. Which is kind of cool. Um, so for now, we're going to move the donor movement over here, and then we're going to examine very closely these, these wheels, or these date discs. It's quite possible that they're not compatible. They look very similar. And the alignment... The alignment of the teeth and the numbers is the same, so like the 11 is in in between the two, yeah, the numbers are between the two. So I think they are the same. <clears throat> so for now, I think I will put the donor aside and bring this back and is there anything else I want to look at here I'm always curious like in order to get into the keyless works you have to remove that date wheel so as long as we're As long as we have it removed, we should take a look at that. It was working fine in terms of setting and... Amplitude is still low. But I think it's time to start reassembly of this. So now the tricky part here is, is getting that basically this tooth has to go under that that gear there and I'm kind of just thinking about how it seemed to pull out and if we can reverse that
Reverse that happy accident. The other thing to look at is like, how would that, how would you remove that whole gear? Because technically it, it slips in underneath the edge of it here. That's crazy what I just did, but I just pried it up a little bit. Not recommended. Maybe it needs to be... <laughs> oh, that's scary. That's what I was trying to do, though. I just move that gear to where that point and now it, it it worked so so i can start to replace these other things like it's gonna go in the right position this has like a position where you can do that the only other thing is do i want to take a look at this other crap because I have it open. Sorry. So could take this gear off. Can take this gear off. It's connected to a little And then that allows me to play with this and take it off. Oh yeah, actually, I'm glad I did that. See, I don't understand how that... Even with this gear off, the powertrain is still running. So this gear is... Oh yeah, I see why. Because, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Man, this must be so boring. Okay, I want to show you this though. So, this, I'll put a link to this in the description for the video. It's How Mechanical Watch Works by Jacob O'Neill. And it's a completely 3D, simple, watch mechanism now see that the mainspring is is in this in this video the mainspring is connected directly to the cannon pinion and then and then you've got the train of wheels going out to the um on the other end of the train of wheels you have the escapement let's see
So you see the power is flowing first through the cannon pinion on the hour hand, and then it's flowing out to the through the train of wheels out to the escapement, which is regulating it. So if you like remove the esca the es the uh, escapement, it would just um, all the all the power would go out and the hands would spin. I actually have a pocket watch that has no escapement, and you can see that you wind it, and then the hands just like spin around freely. So in this case, the power is going. It's going straight into the cannon pinion. But in the case of this, the power is going to the cannon pinion, but it's also taking another path to the escapement. So again, I sped that up. If I turn it over, it immediately slows down. Okay, so somebody's gonna have an opinion on why that is. Now, did I dump any gears or anything? No. Even the, <laughs> the date wheel stayed intact. So I think we can assemble the top part again Oh, the only thing I want to look at is let me try to get this under the microscope. I have thought maybe the cannon pinion had the wrong number of teeth on the gears. That's not the case. Um, this is why the, the cannon pinion has to be, it's press fit into that, that gear there. And that's why I had the, the staking tool, because when you're pressing that on there, it helps a lot to have, uh, to do that above a, a hole like that. So the gear can lay flat and I could even use that now to try to flatten that gear. But frankly, I don't think that's the problem because the amplitude is going down even when this gear is not present. Um, so then the other, the only other thing I can think of is this gear was a replacement from a donor movement and it was a replacement for this gear. Because this gear, I broke. I actually broke it. Uh, let me zoom in. It's hard to see, but this gear is broken. Right there. And there you can see there's a break right there. So we could just make sure just for idiot checking that these are the same gear, the same number of teeth. And they are like they're, those teeth are in sync right there, so that's 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 done. This it's not the problem with the cannon pinion number of gears. It's not that other gear. 
And frankly, because the amplitude is low when those are removed, I, I really had no doubt that it was not a problem with that. Those could be a separate problem in terms of doesn't mean these are not haven't been abused and are perfect, but they are not this the reason for the crazy behavior of this watch. Now one thing that's interesting here is that the gear that drives this, which is the Is this the Minahand? Anyway, the gear is under here. You can see the tooth right there. So that's driving this whole thing, which is the Minahand. And then the hour hand gear goes on top of that. No, wait, that's, yeah. Hour hand is on the outside, then the Minahand, then the second hand. So the hour hand is not there yet. But the hour hand gets its power from this gear, which is like the dividing gear. So that's a reminder. I need to put that back. And then this gear also set is used in setting. Like this gear synchronizes. This gear synchronizes the hour hand and the minute hand. Because this is temporary, I'm just going to set this on there just to show you. So see, this gear is getting... This little gear that's kind of messy here, it's getting power from the cannon pinion. And the cannon pinion is getting power from the mainspring here. It's turning the outside of this gear, and then the inside of this gear ends up turning the hour hand. See that? So that gear is what locks the hour hand and the minute hand together so they move relative to each other correctly. This is another thing I think I need to do, which is like lubricate this a little bit because the way those just stuck together. But for now, <clears throat> it's time to start reassembling And that means this can go on. Before the spring. And then the spring before the spring I need to put the date lock And then, <clears throat> so see the date lock goes between those gears on the date disc and it, it forces it to jump quickly when it jumps. And then it's spring loaded. And that spring can only go in there one way. It's got to go this way. So the trick with this is to kind of hold that spring down across the top of it. Oof.
There we go. And now put this plate back on. without causing that whole thing to spring out of there. Now see, we've got these all these teeth around the date disc engaged underneath these plates, and that's what ultimately keeps the date disc from falling off. Um, and now I need to put the... Ooh, that guy has a screw riding along for the ride. Ugh. This is like such fidgety. I've done this so many times on this movement. Usually I resort to kind of sticking it down with Radico because it's so hard to get the screw started without disrupting that plate. But I got lucky that time or I'm getting better at this. I just want to kind of, I want to put what, what I feel is the right kind of torque on these screws. And for me, it's just like, there's got to be a little bit of torque or else it's just going to, it's too easy for it to un, unscrew itself. But it's no more. I love that. I have finger cots on four, like eight out of ten fingers, but I still ha was using my pinky there. I caught myself. That's, um, oops. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, that's good to test that. Somehow that date wheel slipped out or was not caught. Okay, so here we go again. I don't think that that can be pushed under there. I thought I had caught it. I could re rewind the video, but Could I just push it in right now? I don't think so. It'll be interesting. You can rewind the video, but 
it's a pain for me right now because I'm recording. So basically I have to take this plate off again. That is not fun. Maybe I can swivel this out, press this down. Swivel it back in. Make sure it's on top. It's difficult. I think it was, I think it was above the gear. So now it's below the gear. Because <laughs> I'm holding it down with my finger. Oh, come on. Okay, that's an example of where you need this. Hold that down. Tighten that screw. Try to get this other screw going. Fail. That was a dream, like, oh, just twist it in on the lump erotica. That's a brass tweezer. So it's not magnetism that was doing that. It's it's actually like a micro bit of Rodico, I think. Okay. Here, I'm using my finger again, but I'm bracing against the movement holder. Okay, so I'm just curious. Low amplitude? Yes. Usually at this point I realize I forgot some gear that's under a plate, so I do it. I have to redo it, but I think I got it. So do we want to, I think we want to not do this yet. This is just, these. this gear always falls off. So I'm going to put that aside. I want to flip this over. I could check that the date. Let's check that the date wheel is functioning correctly. Can I put that face down there? Yes.
So what's weird about this is like, I am worried about the keyless works. This should go in, but doesn't want to. If I unscrew this too much, I can actually like pop it out of the key, out of where it goes, and that can be a bad thing. But this should be going in. I also see this grease smear here. What happens if I try to clean that up? Well, I'm going to try. I know it's not all the way in because it's not winding. So if I try turning this. Is it possible I just unscrewed it too far? So I need to go down. Okay, so I don't know why. Don't know why the stem no longer wants to engage. Oh, well that's that's in the setting mode. So it's just not going into winding mode, but that not that that's no problem, it is a problem. But there's something wrong. I see what it is. Well, yeah, I see what it is. That gear is upside down. That should not be geared on top. That should be geared on the bottom. <clears throat> there's a the reason there's, there's a cutout there is not for the gear. It's for the other. It's for the rivet that holds the gear. So like I was saying, usually by the time I get to this point, I realize I've made a mistake. And this time I was making sure I put all the gears back, but upside down. Now, should I do a stunt and try to hold, lift this plate with both of those tiny gears loose and navigate to this cushion? <laughs> or should I move the gears one by one? I mean the gears, the screws. I'm going to not do any fancy stunt. And what's funny is I explained. That gear to. Ex explained how it worked. And then I proceeded to install it. Wait, am I wrong again? It's got to be right. No. There's no reason to be geared on the top. But there's no place to gear it on. I'm confused. I 
Shit. Um, it does go on top because because it interfaces with the this gear on top. Just like I just like I taught in my lesson. It does come into play once you drop the hour hand gear on there. Okay, but anyway, we we're almost like looking at the keyless works. So there's the other question is like why is that not I don't, I'm not really. Something's out of, out of whack with the keyless works, which means also take this plate off again, take the whole date wheel off. Is it just because there's no friction? It could be the, the there's no friction on the gear. You know, this has a square thing on it, right? So you need some back friction. I can see the gears spinning freely, perhaps because the... Oh, wait, that's interesting. Let's see what that tells us. That's the setting position. If I put this back together, I know I'm going to continue to struggle with the keyless works. So I just, there's no point to put it back together. I got to, I got to figure out what that is. Okay, so this other plate comes off again. And now the wheel, the date wheel can come off. Now we can look at the keyless works. Oh, I think there's some misalignment. So these gears can fall if I'm if I'm not careful, but the thing I want to look at here is
basically what I'm looking at is this is the tip of the screw that you loosen to insert the stem. See, now it's working. And so is winding. So I'm not sure I had to actually take <laughs> the date wheel off to do that, but I did fix it. And, and it did appear to me that this screw, which is the bottom of the, the screw that you loosen to, to remove the stem, like that had been loosened too much and, and come out of its, uh, its position. But in any case, oh man, also this spring is still there even with that handling, which is crazy. Like, uh, that was really risky. This spring could have gotten away. But now we need to get the date wheel back on. Okay, and then once the date wheel is on and under this thing, this needs to push in like that. The spring needs to go back in. See, like being bad at watchmaking is actually good because you get a lot of practice. You don't even need more than one movement, although it, it, it helps a, a lot to have two identical movements. Oh, <laughs> that was the lever, so that, that, that won't be too hard to find. The spring shot the lever. Oh, man, that's crazy where that is. I just saw it. So it's all the way over here. Luckily, it wasn't the spring. How was the spring backwards? That is weird. Ah, uh, freak show. So as I was saying, it's good to have two of the same movement because you kind of feel like, well, if I totally screw up this movement, I still I still have one that works and I've learned something about the one that still works because if you if you feel like you ruined something and you learned something about it but now you no longer have that thing it can just start to feel like you're just there's no net benefit so there's a benefit to look this this movement holder is 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 not tight and that's really dangerous because as soon as uh, as soon as it gives you you have like a little chaos play out okay so i gotta try to push the spring down now what's interesting about this is that you can see that's, that little spring is pressing on that foot. That foot's pressing on that ring, and the ring now is up. Like, the spring pressure from all the way over here 
is lifting the the date disk on the other side. So if you if you push down on the date disk on the other side, it can lift that date lock and loose and then the spring can click and everything can fly and that's just from touching something on the other side of the watch. So that's how the that's how tricky this crap is. So I need to secure this Okay, so now it's safe to press down on the other side, and in fact I have to, because we're back in that zone of like, this has to be pressed down before this plate goes on. You know what I love about YouTube conceptually is that even though this is absurd how long this is taking me uh, and how, how little I'm accomplishing, the only person watching this is a person who wants to be watching it. Like, it's voluntary. Like, it, once when, in old media... They had to make all these choices about what kind of content they made based on like millions of people are going to be watching this. And with YouTube, it's like, no, maybe nobody will watch it. Maybe one person will watch it. Doesn't really matter. They're watching it by choice. Now, the other thing is the reason the whole thing exists is because Google is analyzing all these videos for for machine learning and autom uh, um, artificial intelligence. So that software is listening to everything I say, analyzing everything I do, and learning to do watchmaking. <laughs> so in the future, when robots take over and we're all dead, the robots can maintain old watches and trade them on eBay. Okay, so we have like setting. Ooh, there's a problem. You're not gonna believe this. But basically, no, that would be setting the hands. Oh, I know. I just about made an error, a big error of judgment there. I was saying the date mechanism is not turning. And so I thought the, the fault was underneath this um, Canon pinion into the other gear, but the fault why the date mechanism is not turning is simply because the hour hand wheel is not on. So with the hour hand wheel on, you get the full 
see the date wheel this date mechanism is is now operating so now we can go around and see except for it, the hour hand needs to be held down this is the same thing that spring does normally So we should be able to go around and just check that the date something's slipping now. I might have been using too much force. Oh, there it went. I didn't see if it changed. I saw it click though. It clicks twice. It clicks at midnight and noon. It only changes at midnight, obviously. But basically, there's a two phase. I think it just changed there, actually. Okay, so anyway, it's working. So that's all good. <clears throat> Okay, so I think we can put the dial on. There's a dial screw plus, what are those other two screws? Dial, no, dial screw. Are those? Oh, those are the screws that hold the automatic winding mechanism on. So I think we, I think we want to put the dial on now. Now it's a little bit tricky because this screw needs to get back. Ugh. You don't think about this. You don't think about how convenient it is that watches like a planar disc until you're working on the fucking side of it like this. Um, I basically can, can't see anything right now. I guess I'll try looking. I can't even get high enough. I need to remove that. Wow, that's good.
That's probably already tight. We'll come back to that after we tighten the other one. Okay, so <clears throat> next, I got to try to figure out how to put the automatic winding mechanism back on there. Oh no, there's something else. I want to actually remove the balance wheel. Shouldn't be too hard, right? Oh, maybe it is hard. Is it one screw? Yeah. Let's look at this again. The amplitude question. Kind of low amplitude, very low amplitude right now. A little puff of air. And it goes high and it stays high. Now there's two things we could do. We could either take the whole balance wheel out and inspect the pivots, or I could try to take the this jewel off and just look down in there <laughs> which sounds easier so I think I'm gonna try that it's also more fun experimentally speaking because what I think is happening is just gravity should we look at all these other jewels in detail it, gravity doesn't like it on its other side. So something something is shifting and, and the balance wheel is where the majority of the movement is. Now I don't know if I'm capable of doing this. Now what if, let's just inspect that jewel. You can see what's happening there, right? The uh, balance wheel is kind of sitting on the, um, sitting on its other jewel and just kind of free on this side, which is not great. But we can inspect this.
Where's that? This looks dangerous. Okay, so I don't really know. I mean, I'm just going to put this back. I think there's actually two jewels sandwiched together in that little cap, but that's something I'm going to have to get into eventually. But for now, I guess also, let's try this. We'll look at this at a slight angle. Again, I need to prop that up with something. The thing is, I need to look down in there and see if that, if the pivot is is missing, and you can't really see it unless you look at it at an angle. I think it might be shorter than it should be, strangely, which would be kind of like missing. But uh, yeah, if it's nubbed off, that was a problem. So let's let's see if I can if if I can get this. Oh, then the other question would be: Can this donor movement provide that same? or compatible balance. And actually we could, uh, everything's falling off of that. We could even look at that, but that now. But actually, I wanna see if I can even get this jewel back in place. So we need to Okay, it's hard to see because I could zoom in, but basically that little cap is just needs to be flipped on top of that. And then this needs to be squeezed. And then I can try flipping this over again.
Okay, so so I think <laughs> I think the problem is the pivot on that on the top as it lies here on the top of the balance wheel. And in terms of a donor balance wheel, I don't think that's going to help us because, well, maybe. It looks different. So this one's gold. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely, there's not, it's not going to be possible to change the whole, um, The whole thing it's attached to because there's they are they're physically different so it would mat it would mean really uh removing the balance wheel and it also it looks to me like they're different sizes let me see if i can get them both side by side under the microscope so 24 o i think that's 2409 2409 and 2472. I need to I need to find out if they are compatible. Oh, there's one other thing I can do and then we'll be done. I can open the I can open this jewel on top of that and see if the pivot looks different. That's why it's, this is not the same movement, but it'll give us the same information. And again, that's why it's useful to have two of things because if I, if I, if I take the, if I take the jewel off of this one and you see like a giant pivot sticking up, then that tell you something. I just want to try working under the microscope for a second. Maybe I can use Radhika to pick that up. So now, You can see a pretty healthy pivot right there. And I feel like I never managed to get that view of the other one. So let's see if I can get that back where it belongs.
even the difficulty of getting that to sit down in there kind of indicates to me that the top of the pivot on the other one is broken. Okay, so what we're going to do is the same thing. Take my glasses off. Just tricky getting that in focus, but give me a second here. So there's something there. I mean, the pivot is not gone. It's interesting, I can't. I guess it's kind of half gone. I can compare it in the video, but... Oh, but it's also low amplitude now, but I don't want to blow that right. Wait, where's the... Yeah, I can... Oh no, that's because there's no, there's no support at the top, probably. Okay. So I think this is all good exercise for me to um, prepare for kind of getting into oiling and all that stuff. The world of the inside of the watch just keeps getting smaller and more complicated.
So that may or may not need a new balance staff with new pivots. Probably would benefit by that, even if it's not technically absolutely necessary. Oh, so the automatic winding mechanism now. Just in case no one noticed, it's been uh, two hours and 10 minutes and I've accomplished nothing. Man, I don't know. Okay, this whole thing rotates. It's got these two screw holes. I guess this thing... So it's either... The screw holes are either here and here, which doesn't make sense. Maybe it does make sense. Yeah, it does. Interesting. Okay, so there's a window here so you can see that jewel. But otherwise, that seems like the proper... And it seems to have just sat down on, the, on there. So strangely, one of the screws is blued and the other one is not. So I have to check the video to see if I can tell if I put that in the right place or not, if it matters. Maybe that's blued just because it looks pretty with those jewels. And you got these do nothing jewels in there too. Like what's that all about? See those jewels that are just like windows? Are they doing anything? I don't think so. This other gear doesn't even have them. Okay, so anyway. That's a lot of, um, that's a lot of watchmaking to, to accomplish nothing. Oh, the hands. Uh, don't even want to put the hands on it. It's not running. I'm looking for midnight.
I can't see if the if the wheels are even turning. <laughs> At that exact instant. Okay, while well, they're turning. Okay, so the, the the main thing with the hands is that it's not critical. Alignment is not critical because they're the watch is not gonna be happy until they so the movement is serviced anyway. Seriously. Ooh, that was nice. Okay, so now we need, where are those guys? Okay, pretty happy with that. I just feel like this probably could get pressed down a bit more. Second hand. Wow, I've never had such success placing a second hand before. That was just like, I was like, mm, should I take a disciplined approach to this? I think it's all good. One thing I'm worried about is like every time removing hands, like removing and putting hands back on, basically it's really hard not to do, not to do tiny, tiny scratches. Like if you look at this other watch,
Ugh, can't put it under the... Yeah, I can. See what's happened to those hands over time? Like, they're just, like, butchered. And the dial is gone because <laughs> I screwed that up so bad. So, like... um that's why with when with this watch, I'm sad that I can't seem to get it running because it's going to necessitate more and more of these interventions that each one risks or adds a little bit of wear and tear. Okay, so anyway, the next thing is, I guess I could, th to get this on, I need to... This is the same problem of like, now I've already got the hands on there. I need to put this ring on it, but I can no longer put it in the movement holder because the second hand will come around and it won't be the first time I did this, just holding it in my bare hands. I don't know if you can see that, but let's get that focused again. Basically, I just pulled that with the tweezers over the edge. That should be enough to hold it while I do it on the other side. That's what you have to do right there. Oh man, there's this Do I have that video right here? I think I do, yeah. Look at this guy in India. He's servicing an entire Seiko and he never puts it in a case or a movement holder. Does the whole thing in his hands. Is that crazy or what? So that... Um, that guy's an old timer. I, I, I found his channel. I actually put a reference to his channel on my channel and, and I, I sent him a note about it. He said, thank you. <laughs> I got to get in touch with him again. Um, okay, so we're ready to go back in the case. Just got to remove the crown again, stem and crown. So one thing I want to point out, if it's not, if I haven't stated it explicitly, I think I've implied it. I've never completely taken apart any of these movements, like in this ETA, you know, the only movement I've completely taken apart and, and, and put back together was a Cal, I, IWC Cal 44. Um, and that's a tiny, tiny ladies movement. So at this point, I've done quite a bit of... Um, Just what you just saw in the last two and a half hours, I've done a lot. I've gotten pretty close to taking it completely apart, but I haven't. 
I haven't taken one of these completely apart. But I'm at this point. I have. I, I'm pretty confident that you know that's the next step, and that. But but it shouldn't. I shouldn't do it until I'm ready to lubricate it and examine it every piece carefully. Make sure that nothing needs to be replaced, so that when I put it back together again, it has a chance of running. But that should be. That should be. I'm pretty close. Like I say. So then the this this spring which is the this holds the movement in the case so that it doesn't rattle around. This watch came without this spring, but I I took it from spare parts. I had to alter it a little bit to fit, but because it's a spring, it was fine with that. It springs out to the correct position. Technically, I should grease this gasket or it has a chance of binding. These waterproof, these cases with these gaskets are quite waterproof since I have the other one. Um, so that's kind of cool. But you do have to, if you don't use that gasket grease, the rubber will bind and buckle and squeeze out or rip or whatever. So with the with this crown, it's not so important to lubricate it every time if you know you're going to keep taking it apart before you go in the water with it. But with the, the case back gasket, it's more important because you'll you'll actually damage the gasket. With the crown, you're not going to damage it. It's just not going to be as waterproof unless it's lubricated. At this point, I need the rubber ball. This is the one thing about the finger cot. I could just get rid of the finger cots too. There's one thing I'm curious about, as I'm sure you are too, which is what's this thing going to do on the time grapher? Same thing, crazy. Crazy town. Oops. Now, what we learned though is that if it's if it's turned upside down, it's probably not gonna I can't I can't activate it to go faster. Nah. It's still Nah. It doesn't matter. Okay, anyway, I think we did no harm. It was two and a half hours. Um, I think it just needs a full service and and there's a possibility it's gonna need a new balance staff and pivots, um, uh, if nothing else. Um, 
but I'm not capable of doing that yet. But I feel like I'm closer to knowing, oh, I did change the date wheel, uh, the date disk. So that's, a, that's an accomplishment. Okay, thanks a lot. If you watched all this, I really appreciate it. Um, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.